Hello, my name is Cliff Tom, and I am an American, and I have been teaching IELTS for academic purposes for almost a decade, almost 10 years. So I am showing my age with this one, meaning I am telling you how old I am and how long I've been doing this. Hopefully, you will also learn some English slang, some idioms, some paraphrasing to help better your IELTS marks or your IELTS scores. So above is just one of the many solid books that possible books or materials that I use for my classes. Uh, I teach this at the university level. This will either be provided to you from my university. I also teach this independently and I've been teaching this with my private clients online for quite some time as well. So again, this is International English Language Testing System. So it's an international test of your English skills and sounds and tones and writing ability. So let us move forward. And there's 11 slides and I'll try to keep this under 15 minutes, okay. So again, here's the contents, right? The scoring and marking, it is about your reading, your writing, your listening skills, comprehension, as well as speaking. And we'll review the sections again, uh, just to remind you of what to study and how to study and how best to prepare. That's the third portion. And then pronunciation is key. As you all know, there's so many different sounds and tones throughout our world in terms of languages, but how you put them together makes all the difference in how you pronounce them and enunciate them. Uh, you want to sound as naturally as possible so other native language speakers or language individuals can understand you, right? Now vocabulary learning, that is generally something that you can do on your own. Uh, it's not something, it's possibly something that we'll review as instructors. I know I will review uh, during my class and I'll also congratulate you if you use it appropriately. And then of course, the seventh portion is practice, 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 just like any skill. You don't get better at it unless you practice. All right, moving forward, our third slide. So marking, that's more of the British way of saying grading or scoring. We Americans will generally say grades or scores, uh, but marking is the more of the British way. So if you are watching this via video, feel free, feel free, pardon me, to just freeze frame, right? There you go. Feel free to freeze frame. There's a tongue twister for you. And just go ahead and read this. A lot of this great information is already available to you online. I'm just providing this to you as a, re a reminder of what my course will entail. Uh, again, it's I'm spe a specialist in academic IELTS learning. I've done generalized as well, but I prefer teaching those individuals who really want to further their education in a native English speaking area, format, or university, place, what have you. So. Okay, moving forward to uh, slide number four. So the major section will is speaking. This is where, and with all credit to my fellow English teachers throughout the world, there's two specific, two specific concentrations of IELTS that I really think you would need to have a native English speaker help guide you. And one is speaking and the other is writing, okay? We'll get into the writing coming up, but speaking because we have the native English listening or hearing mechanisms, right? Via our ear and our conscious that we can help guide you so that you are more intelligible to the invigilator, as the British would say, or the examiner, the tests. Uh, for the examination so that you are more clear and concise with how you want to convey your answers to them. Otherwise, uh, there's many competent 
English teachers throughout the world that can help you with the other aspects, but especially when it comes to the speaking and writing of which I will talk about coming up. So the IELTS listening, again, feel free to freeze frame this. I'm sorry for the image here, but that is where it's placed and I cannot move this around for some reason. So I am sorry for that. But again, this information is available online or if you have the PPT version, just get rid of my ugly face and you can just read this. But all of this information is online and available discussing all of these sections. Okay, moving forward. So reading, okay, again, reading, this is something that you can practice and that you can do on your own. Uh, a lot of time may be wasted when we're together in one of my courses and one of my classes and sessions wherein there is much preparation. Don't think you'll be able to score well on the IELTS exam if you do not self-study. Uh, depending on when your exam is, how many hours, it's all up to the individual. You'll know when it starts clicking in, so to speak, when the lights come on, so to speak, in your eyes and your brain, that you're really achieving. I think language is, is a very, it's a steep pyramid, but then once you get closer to the top, it does become easier and easier, but you really need to push yourself to that brink or to that limit, and then you will start excelling more quickly. So again, feel free to read this at your leisure, or leisure in the British way of speaking. All right, IELTS writing. Again, this is an area that I would firmly have a native English speaker help you with, especially if you come from the Eastern versus West. I'm not sure if you've ever tried this, but try to translate online and nothing matches up ever. It just keeps bouncing back and forth. Henceforth, a native English speaker can help guide or correct your writing skills to better present it to the IELTS examiner. And there's generally two portions. The first portion uh, will be maybe graphs or charts, and then a short essay portion for task two. The academic, right, will prepare you for academia if you want to study in a native English speaking country. The generalized portion will just be more informal, maybe writing a letter or writing a note or writing an email or writing an email to someone within a native English speaking country. I'm going to try to include closed captioning below, subtitles. Hopefully I'm speaking slow enough uh, for individuals to understand what I'm also telling you as well. So moving on to slide eight. We're coming up on the nine minute mark. I'll try to be around 10 minutes, that would be great. So again, all of this information, this wonderful information is provided to you on the internet, online. Uh, the ellipses, one, two, three, just like practice, 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 prepare, 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 never ending. You should just do it as much as possible. Don't get frustrated, don't overdo it. There's a point where you just can become crazy you're studying too much don't stress yourself out but again you only get better at any skill whether it's kung fu uh, riding a bicycle even right you need to keep getting back on that bicycle until you achieve your goal of that being able to ride it well i would also I would take as many practice tests under test conditions or we say under light conditions as possible because it prepares you for the time constraints of the IELTS exam. It helps you to visualize and internalize how much time you have to successfully write and complete the essay. And then also be aware of the time constraints, right? So that's exactly what I just said. You only have X amount of time. And this also goes with speaking too. So when you're speaking, don't just keep blabbing or blubbering or, uh, droning droning on make sure it's clear and concise to the point that you're not only comprehending the question but you're able to clearly and concise concisely speak 
your answers, okay? Uh, and then develop a wide range of reading skills. Sorry, we're coming up a little bit over 10 minutes. I'll try to keep it under 12, okay? But de develop a wide range of reading skills, meaning read as much English materials as possible, whether even if it's out of your comfort zone, meaning if you don't like sports, you must read some sports about some sports in English because that will better prepare you if you have a sports question. If you don't like cosmetics or jewelry, read a little bit about jewelry. Try to expand your knowledge base about topics. I'll talk about that coming up in another slide as well. And then use appropriate and assertive English terms, right? Be as clear and concise as possible with your answers that will benefit you on your final score or your marking. Okay, number nine. This is again the International English Language Testing System as well as the IPA. So this is the International Phonetic Alphabet. I know there are many different sounds and tones. I'd like to think I come from a standard English speaking area of the Midwest of the States. However, we do have a standard phonetic a speaking pronunciation enunciation guide. I would first, if you have never spoken much English at all or just minimally, and especially not to native English speakers, I would use this guide uh, and to go over it. It's a little bit grayed here. I would review it in one of my courses. This is obviously a very large process and I want to not bore you as of today, but it is in my courses and classes. Uh, to learn the sounds and tones of native English speakers is vital. So you can, again, speak clearly, concisely, and intelligibly to your IELTS examiner. Okay, sorry, a little bit over 12 minutes. We'll try to keep it under 15, I promise you on that one. So number 10, okay, all the information that I basically reiterated has been derived and already talked about in plentitude online on the internet. These are some of my favorite websites. IELTS Liz, I believe it's Liz, right? It is Liz. She's, this site is wonderful. I pull extract much information from that. Uh, she has numerous uh, levels of IELTS vocabulary from art from all of the topics that have been previously discussed. Of course, nowadays, more technology will be used, more technological topics, I think, would be used in IELTS because that is what our life is all about. But she's wonderful, and then IELTSspeaking.com, the UK site, has a wonderful list, as well as IELTS Fighter. So again, if you're viewing this via PPT, maybe this is a hyperlink, and you can just click on it, uh, or you can just copy it and paste into your browser. If this is a video, I'm sorry, please freeze frame it or just go to IELTS Liz or IELTS Speaking or IELTS Fighter and I'm sure you can find it uh, on your own. Okay, the last slide, here we go. What did I say, 15 minutes, perfect, gonna wrap it up. Uh, that's my time constraint that I gave me, see? So here we go. Practice, 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 as the Chinese would say, zhongbei, zhongbei, zhongbei. And then wei uh, xiao, I've also, if you're looking at my channel, I've also provided a, an older PowerPoint presentation, an older video on smile, 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 the day of, or how to best prepare and what to prepare, as well as make sure you smile, no one wants to interview or examine an angry person or no one wants an angry person in their country correct all right but notice how i've sp spelled practice with the s as well as the c again ielts is a british based test testing service and i've never met a non commonwealth or non-british person talking or examining <laughs> sorry examining at all so make sure you get in the habit of spelling in the British format, right? All right, so we will end it there. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. I try to make my courses and my classes as interesting as possible, even though it can be a dry subject. Again, this is Cliff Tom, and I look forward to 
coaching and instructing your IELTS. Thank you.